What's up guys, my name is Technobo here for Troubleshoot and today I've got a super simple but very important fix for you if you're having problems with the new Call of Duty Modern Warfare, whether it's the Warzone game mode, multiplayer in general or anything like that. Basically, while you're playing the game, you may randomly disconnect and you'll either get an in-game error or you'll get a blizzard error that says something along the lines of disconnected from a game server. Now, a lot of the solutions online are pointing towards using a VPN to fix your issues. And while it may help, you may still run into these issues eventually. So with that quick fix aside, here's how we go ahead and fix the problem completely. The solution, unfortunately, is port forwarding. Now, of course, if you're having this issue on a PS4, Xbox, or anything that's not PC, this may help you. However, I'm not entirely sure, and the process will be somewhat different, but it should still be somewhat the same. So before we get to the rest of this tutorial, I do have another port forwarding video for the game linked down in the description below, just in case I'm not clear enough in this one. However, at the end of the video, I'll also go through another tip that can help fix this issue. So for now, head across to the first link in the description down below, which will take you to this Activision page over here. We'll simply look for Call of Duty Modern Warfare, we'll click on it, and then we have this over here. PC, PlayStation 4, Xbox One. Now, of course, because I'm on PC, I'll be using these TCP ports and these UDP ports. What exactly that means is not important, but just make sure that you get the right numbers for the right platform. Then the next step is allowing it through our Windows firewall. Now, of course, if you're using an antivirus with a built-in firewall, you'll have to go ahead and do that in there. And of course, because antiviruses are so different, I won't be able to show you that in this tutorial. Assuming that you don't have an antivirus with a firewall or you're using the default Windows firewall, all you need to do is press start and type in firewall. Once you've done that, head across to Windows Defender Firewall and you'll see this over here. On the left, head across to Advanced Settings and you'll see another window pop up. In the very top left, we'll go to Inbound Rules and we'll click New Rule. Then we'll head across to Port, Next, and we'll leave it as TCP. Then make sure to click Specific Local Ports. Then, looking inside of the web page, we'll go ahead and select all of the numbers under TCP Ports, head back to the firewall, paste them in here as such, Next, Allow, Next, make sure all three are checked, Next, and we'll give it a name. I'll call it MW. Finish. Then we'll click New Rule once again. We'll go to Port, Next, and we'll select UDP this time. Then we'll head back to the web page and we'll copy all of the ports under UDP. Heading back to the firewall, UDP, specific, and paste this in here. Next, allow, next, all three checked, next, give it a name, and finish. Then we'll head to outbound rules, and we'll do the exact same. New rule, port, next, we'll go ahead and select the TCP ports, paste them in here, next, allow, next, all three, next, name, finish. New rule, port, next, UDP. We'll copy the UDP port numbers, paste them in here again, next, allow, next, all three, next, MW, finish. Now that we're done with the Windows firewall, all that's left to do is go ahead and port forward in your router. Note that port forwarding through multiple routers or switches or extenders on the way to the router going out to the internet is a bit more of a confusing process. However, if you're connected directly to the router that's connected to the internet, all you need to do is log into that router's web page. Now, of course, because all routers are so incredibly different, I've gone ahead and created myself a basic demonstration. However, of course, you'll have to go ahead and Google for your instructions for your specific internet router. Over here, under external port, we're going to go ahead and enter these numbers one by one. So TCP ports 3074 is both under TCP and UDP. So external, I'll paste that number in here and internal over there. Then for protocol, if you have the option, select both of them. However, if you only see one, you'll have to enter it for TCP and then UDP separately. However, because I have both, I'll select that. Then for local IP, we need the IP address of our computer inside of our local network. To do that, we'll hold down start and press R, and we'll type in CMD. Hit enter and type in IP config. Once you've done that, look for the way that you're connected to the internet. Because I'm connected via cable, I'll look for ethernet adapter. Then, as long as it has an IPv4 address next to it, we just need to make note of this number over here. For me, it's 192.168.1.20. Looking at our router page over here, it's already got 192.168.1 filled in. 
So all I need to enter is 20. Then I'll hit add new, and we'll go ahead and repeat this for all of the other ports. So we have ports 27014 to 27050 under TCP, and under UDP, we have 27000 to 27031 and 27036. Now, because these are both ranges over here, we'll go ahead and open everything from 27000 to 27050, which will cover both of these over here and these three here. That is, of course, if you have the option to select TCP and UDP combined. However, if you don't, you'll have to enter this one separately, followed by this one separately over here, and this one separately at the very end. So I'll go ahead and type in 27000 to 27050. This is of course also assuming that you can enter in ranges. Then I'll copy it over to internal port. So we're port forwarding everything between 27,000 and 27,050. Local IP, 20, add new. Then looking back over here, we finished going through all of the TCP ports, all we have left is UDP 3478 and this range over here. So I'll copy 3478, head back to my router, paste it in all of these places, and I'll set it to just UDP. 192.168.1.20, add new. And then last of all, we have this range over here. So I'll go ahead and copy it, and it's 4379 to 4380. I'll enter that range in both of these places. I'll select UDP as the protocol, and I'll enter 20 over here. Once you've got here and you've port forwarded all of the ports for your specific platform, both the TCP and UDP ports, as I have here, if you have the ability to combine them, it's gonna be quite a bit easier. But once you've gone ahead and made sure that your firewall is either disabled or it allows these ports through, and your router has got these port forwarded to your local computer, then you should be a-okay to launch up your game and play without getting randomly disconnected, getting some sort of blizzard error saying that you were disconnected from the game servers. Then onto the last two final tips for the solution. The first one, inside of your blizzard launcher, if you're in the Europe region, make sure to change it to Americas. However, if you're in the Americas and you're having this issue, try changing it to Europe. Now, this shouldn't affect the servers that you play on in-game. It's only the Blizzard account region, meaning that all of your friend messages and things will go through that region. It won't at all affect your ping in-game as far as I know. You'll still match on whatever local servers you have or the closest ones to you. Then, of course, the last tip that I promised in the very beginning is something that's not so important, but it can help you quite a bit from getting these errors. Simply right-click on your start bar and click Task Manager or hit Control, Shift, and Escape to bring up this screen over here. Once inside of Task Manager, head across to the Details tab, and we'll go ahead and look for Modern Warfare 3 when it's open. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Once it's open, I'll find it on the list, and it's over here as modernwarfare.exe. I'll simply right-click on it, go to Set Affinity, and make sure it's set to High. By default, it should be set to High. However, if it's not, you should definitely set it to High. Once you've done that, you shouldn't have any more issues. Anyways, thank you all for watching. My name's been Technoba here for Troubleshoot. I hope this video helped you, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.